All right. Hey, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. It is time to review Trip Planner Spa. <coughs> we can review our trip to the spa. <laughs> Was this a trip to the spa? No. <laughs> yeah, I started. Um, I started kind of getting a head start on the review so that we don't have to do quite as much setup. And I'm like. Then there's a lot in this. It's like write the whole back end and then there's a whole plan. Okay. We don't have to do a review. I'm, I'm actually curious if like you just want to work through it and not do a review. There isn't a video for this though, so I can't. If we don't do a review, you don't get a review. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. And I know it says review video, but there is no review video. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's do a review then. Um, what do you want to review? Oh, okay. So, okay, so fetching attractions. Yeah, that was a pretty common one. And then populating uh, those drop downs. So, this is like the whole front end. So this is like when I, when I like click something. Yeah, I, I can remember this. I sorry, I couldn't hear any of that. But. <laughs> Just like high energy right now. I just want to know about how to do all of those things without repeating myself sometimes. Oh, I just sure. ended up writing out a thing like for hotels and activities <laughs> and and I wasn't like passing in variables and everything like that. Okay. Uh question. Yeah. This is great. Okay. Let's get started. If you want to pay attention, great. If you don't, just keep it down. So I have, I need to install some stuff, apparently, like volleyball. Uh, so I started on our server, got it right here. Um, this thing is going to load. Let me just ignore volleyball right now because we don't need it. OK, don't have any models. Let's make a model. Um, so touch model, uh, server models JS. Okay, uh, so we need here SQLize, which probably has not been installed. And we'll need how, wait, how do I do this? I need to create a new SQLize instance, right? So I can I can say new SQLize and give it a connection string. Oh, thank God, my autocomplete is working. Um, which is Postgres, localhost, and then the database, right? Which I guess I'll say is trip planner. Um, uh, 5432? No, that's the default one. You have never needed to type that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and then we can set up some models. So we don't have users. What are our models? We have attractions. Hmm. Place. Yeah, let's see. Actually, what are place, place, hotel, restaurant, activity? These are all things we need. And this tells us what they have, I guess. So, hotel has, okay, so place is an address. It belongs to a, oh, it belongs to a hotel or it belongs to a, oh, they all belong to a place. That makes sense. Sorry? Okay. 
Okay, so let's start with place. Um, so places has, um, what are the things here? Address, city, state, and location, which uh, it looks like this is a string. My autocomplete is really very confused right now. Why would you autocomplete a string of garbage? Okay, so address is a string, city is a string, uh, state is also a string, phone number looks like a string, uh, and then location looks like an array of, actually wait, is there a, no, there is no geoplane. Um, oh, there's geometry though. It's an array of, what are these, floats? What's that? Float. Float? OK, great. So array of floats. <clears throat> OK, so now that I have a place, um, I guess I also need hotel, or the other things here? Hotel, restaurant, and activity, which, should these really be separate tables? They shouldn't, right? Yeah, the workshop has them as separate tables. It doesn't seem like obviously good design for them to be separate tables because they have the same content, basically. Or they have the same shape of content. Anyway, let's do it um, because we must. What's that? One has places. <laughs> they all belong to a place. So, but they don't have, is there, is there even one single field that's different between them? Yeah, no, they're just, I'm looking at the top right now. Oh, um, so, so here's a restaurant, yeah. cuisine, seafood. Okay, okay. Arguable, but sure, I'll take it. <laughs> um, okay, so hotel is a model with, the table name is hotels, and a hotel looks like, yeah, so a place we're going to get through an association. Um, this is a string. This is an integer. And this is a string. Um, and then you probably remember, what does a restaurant have? Restaurant. Cuisine. And price. Uh, cuisine and price rather than num stars. Oh, okay, so this needs to be like type integer. Um, how do I specify that? Or is it like this? Like this? So, so what do I do? I say validate. One max five. Does that look right? Same thing for price. Okay. Um, so this is like a one to five. Okay, um, and then the last one is attractions. Activities. What's that? Activities. Oh, activities. Yeah, which has name, an age range looks like an enum, I guess. 
which is only ever all. So it's just a string, or it's just, yeah. <laughs> or it's just not stored. Why are we storing this? <laughs> Great. <laughs> As you can tell, I have opinions about the data model. Activity. Uh, so name, age, range. Okay, um, now I think we can associate them. And what are the associations? They all belong to a place. Um, activity, uh, restaurant. Is there anything else? We don't have days, right? We don't, we're not actually storing that in the, um, in the database. Okay, so with all that done, we can sync the database. Actually, is that happening in app? That is totally happening in app. Um, okay, so. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I guess. It does in this case uh, because these are not hoisted. These are assignments, so you have to export them after they're done. You can, you, I could do this, uh, db equals module.exports db, um, or actually just exports db, um, exports dot place, exports dot hotel. Uh, and exports that activity. So you can do that if you want, um, just assigning a text works wherever it's created. So now, can I find models? It's like a, oh, like that's a pretty old error. Please install the PG module manually. I'm going to watch the C compiler, C compile. And then if this works, did you have to set this to force sync the database? It just worked. Just to see. Let's see if it's necessary. I think it probably will be necessary. Um, OK. so. This might complain that I don't have such a database. Place this has not been defined. Uh, where is it working on this? Hotels, restaurant, activity, places. Here it is, place. Uh, this is happening on line five. Oh, sorry, define. No, I just apparently think it should be dot model. Great. Uh, dot model actually returns a existing model. Okay, so this database does not exist. Um, now it does. Okay, we're synchronated. Great. Uh, and we should be able to seed then. Can I just run the seed script? Is that the idea? Uh, hotel has not been, oh god, really? They're singular, fine, they're singular. Place, hotel, it's, it's not that common for table names to be singular. Restaurant, activity. Oh. 
new tables, sync all of them, and then node server C. Cool. Um, so if I just look at my database, Well, that's downright confusing. I guess SQLize is stemming this and pluralizing it. What a terrible idea that we got from Active Record. This is, it is this behavior of like the database engine somehow knows how to pluralize nouns is brought in from Ruby on Rails. It's just a little too magical for my taste. Yeah, okay, but here they are, great. Uh, Great. Okay, seeding successful. Any questions about that? All right. Um, so now let's. Oh yeah. Uh, well, one. We saw one thing that happened was that, where did it happen? Here, I think. Uh, so in this case, I wrote, I defined, I had defined hotels, which meant that this script, which I presume goes and calls db.model looking for the name of looking for a model named hotels um, or looking for a model named hotel doesn't find one because I called it hotels. So in that case, there's a mismatch between the seed data, the seeder script and the models and it barks with an error. So in many cases, you'll get an error. In some cases, you won't get any error. Like if a number, uh, if you, I think if you put a number in, if you try and insert a number into a string, it will just get turned into a string. If you try and put a string into a number, maybe that'll fail. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so when I originally did this, I just, I just tried to export the Uh, yeah, so why why do I have to do this exports dot uh, for each thing? Why can't I just say like module dot exports equals db? Yeah. Um, because I don't think db dot because something else like app is or not app seed ny sure this is going to import hotel and I don't think that db dot hotel is a thing. I think what you could do is here. Let's find out what is a thing. Uh, fire server models. Uh, dot slash server, server models. Okay, so db dot hotel is not a thing, which means this import will fail. Where is it? Oh, not this one. Uh, this import will fail. And later when we import it in app.js, it'll fail. Um, but I think db.models.hotel, no. Oh, it's there. So you could basically, you would just have to change how it's used elsewhere. So if I, instead of doing this, said, here, let's change it in the Chicago one and we'll run it. Um, okay, so instead of doing all this stuff, I'm going to just export the database. So now if I just require the models file, I just get the database. So this is basically what you did. The fact that I'm setting exports equal to stuff up here just gets overwritten by the fact that I set module exports down here. Um, then I can't do this, but I can say um, db is require models, and then, why are we using 
And then I can take place, hotel, and restaurant, and activity. And honestly, why do I need any of these? Oh, I need place. But I don't need any of the others. So I just need place, and I can take that out of um, db.models. Yeah. And so now I should be able to just run the Chicago C script. Yeah. So you can, you just have to be aware that you can't just import the thing. Maybe this is better. This is kind of nice, right? You just have one handle on the database. You don't get these individualized handles on individual things. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of is. It really kind of is. Um, so sure, let's keep doing things that way. Um, oh, so I drag these seed scripts can't both be run. That's really unfortunate. So let's, um, we will change this not to use force true. Mm -hmm. And we'll have this do the same thing. So just grab these two lines. Uh, and then no server CNY. And then the SQL trip planner. I have Chicago and I have New York. So everything's everything's kept it. Okay, so we've got a database. Great. Um, what about how are we gonna get that data on our front end? What actually does our front end even look like right now? Uh, let's say uh, this export from the, the models. Uh, I think, what port is this running on? Great. Let's take a look at our front end. It's not going to look like much right now. Oh, am I not running at all? Oh, yeah. So that had to change too, because I was previously basically plucking out DB, no longer necessary. Okay, so our front end looks pretty retro. But we've got a map, we've got some placeholder data, and now we're going to want to put our the data that we just seeded onto the front end, which means we'd like there to be an API route. I think the one that was suggested is that you go to API attractions and instead of saying not found, it gives you all the attractions. So how do we do that? I guess we'll need a get route for API attractions. I think they suggest having, like, putting this in another file, which you can definitely do, and it's probably better practice. Um, I'm, I'm just going to do it here so we don't have to be switching files quite so much. Uh, and what is this going to do? This is going to load all of the attractions, so we have to and serve them in a object that's like hotels, restaurants, activities, right? That's the whole idea. Okay, so we want hotels. Actually, this is just db.models, right? Uh, we'll do this individually. So 
Hotels will be um, db.models. Okay, let's actually uh, just do this. Hotels, or hotel, hotel, um, activity, activity. Um, what's the third one? Restaurant. So this is the thing you have to do if you don't just export them from the models file. So now I can say hotels dot find everything, um, and then activities uh, activities is activity dot find all and. Restaurant is restaurant. Find all. Uh, and I should probably res.send this. Is that going to work? Hotels is not defined. Okay, that's a uh, Wait, oh, hotel. <laughs> what am I seeing? What do these appear to be? You just, you did pledge, right? Yeah, these are promises. Draft, what do I have to do? I have to wait for the I have to like wait for the promise to resolve and then return that data, right? So we'll make this async and we'll await each of these. Okay, so now I've got a bunch of stuff. I think we also want the place data there too. So we want to include places. I think the easiest place to do this will be in the model. So I can say here default scope um, include place. So this means, yeah, here we go. So hotels have it, others don't yet. Palmer House, Fulton Chicago. Conrad, a lot of hotels. Yeah, others won't, but we can just um, include this as well. All right, so now we have all of our attractions with places. That seems like a nice place to commit now. Any questions? Yeah, you can do that too. So this will always, here the default, um, the default for the model becomes returning with the place, um, which you may not want, right? It, it might mean that you're fetching too much information if you use the model in other places. We are not using the model in any places, other places. Um, in fact, this is the only place where we'll use the model at all. So in this case, it's really, there's no difference. And it's not even that it's not like really shorter for it to be here. It's, it maybe keeps this more succinct. Uh, I feel like there's maybe one other, no, actually I don't have to catch next. I was like, aren't, don't I have promises? Don't I have to send something to next? I don't think so because any problem here will turn into a promise rejection, which will cause some uh, express to error out. So I think it's fine.
uh, attractions API route. Okay, other questions before we jump to the front end? Okay, let's look at the front end. So here is our hyper zoomed, kind of ugly looking front end. Um, okay, so what are the things, what are the to-dos we have on the front end? We need to first fetch the data. Um, so let's see. Uh, fetch API attractions, and then we need to put, so fill out um, hotels, restaurants, You know, I had a lot of trouble spelling restaurants the first time I live coded this workshop. Never again. Rest our rants. Know it. <laughs> like fuchsia, my, like one of my favorite colors, especially for debugging. I know how to spell that. Uh, what else? Okay, so we need to fill this stuff out, and then we need to put pins on the map. But that happens when we add stuff to the itinerary, right? Like, the pins are not there by default, I think. Okay, so we'll leave that for now. Let's do one of two. So to fetch API attractions, I'm gonna fetch API attractions. Um, yeah. Uh, so now if I load this page again, I should see it. Great. Oh, so sorry, this is the response object. Not so helpful. Uh, I want the JSON, so I think I can do uh, response, response.json. Yeah, and now I've got the data. So that's nice. Um, and then I want to put these into these boxes, which what even are these? Hotels choices, restaurants choices, activities choices. Okay, so it looks like this object I'm getting back is keyed on something that I can, basically if I look at the keys of this JSON object and then look for those selects on the page, I can create options for them. So let's do that. Um, okay, so then create options from activities. It'll be a long function name for once. Okay, so Um, so we'll look at all of the keys of activities. This will be, um, let's reload this page again. How do I tell this not to preserve the log? Don't preserve it. Activities is not defined. God damn, who just wants to tell Nodemon to not restart when the front end changes? I want to tell Nodemon that. Okay, so this, so object.keys of activities will be the keys of this. Um, Thing that was sent back, <laughs> I'm losing my words, of the JSON object that was sent back, uh, which is hotels, activities, and restaurant. What? <laughs> why, why is one of them not plural? What happened? Restaurant. Was this the case for you, too? 
Oh, no, this is my fault. This is my fault. I just, oh, thank God. <laughs> okay, now it's restaurants. Great. Fabulous. Um, in fact, maybe that actually highlights a problem I have, right? I'm sort of duplicating the name of the model here and here, which is giving me more chance of error. So what I could do, this code will not be quite as easy to understand, but maybe it'll be less error prone. I could, um, I could say, um, object that keys of db dot models. So that'll say basically take all of the models. Oh no, this, see that's wrong because I don't want all the places. So let's, yeah, so I'll just tolerate the fact that I could screw this up and did screw this up by typing the wrong thing here. But now the right thing is typed and obviously that mistake will never get made again. Okay, so now these are the keys of the object. If I look up, um, so I can use that to figure out what select I should look up, right? It, it'll be get, ob, get document by ID, the attraction type dash choices. So should I do that in here? No, I think I should say um, uh, create, create options from act Create options for, um, oh yeah, let's make this a loop. So for each type of activity, we're gonna create options for that activity, Jesus Christ. Um, oh, sorry, this is attraction. This is all attractions. Create options from attractions. Create options from attractions. That makes a little bit more sense, right? For each type of attraction, create options for that type. Creating options for that type of, of um, attraction, what is called data, or maybe even, uh, actions. This will be, so first we wanna find this thing, um, hotels choices. So select is, this will be get element by ID um, for type choices. And then we'll want to append, we'll, we'll first wanna create options for each of these attractions. So what will that look like? Let's log. Let's just see where we are. What's going on? OK, so now I've, um, through this loop, I've divided up my attractions into um, each type, so hotels, activities, and choices. I am finding the right select box for each of them. And now, these are the things that I need to create um, options for. And it looks like all I really have to do is look at the name and create an option, um, an option element whose name is this and whose value is ID. And maybe I'll put this whole data object on that option as well. 
just for fun because I think it'll be useful later. Um, so that means I can say all my options are attractions dot map to create option for um, oh just create option create option is going to take an attraction singular and do a document create element or an option element. Is it text content or value? To fill it with something. I think I want value to be the ID. So text content will be attraction.name and value will be attraction that I attempt. What's that? Uh, I think either is fine. I think. Let's find out. And we'll return this option element. And then here I can just say, um, Uh, options dot for each uh, option select dot append child option. And let's let's actually call these um, append options run because that's what's going to happen. It's going to append whatever it gets to the DOM. What? Let's just try to do that. No, really? Are you kidding me? Uh, why? What? Oh, God. Sorry, that was my editor thinking that I had typed attempt and trying to import it from somewhere. It's not going to work. Okay. And I've got everything. So I've got a whole bunch of stuff. I've got hotels, I've got restaurants, and I've got activities. That's just great. Um, I also still have these placeholders, so let's get rid of that. And note that a restaurant, an activity. OK, cool. And I think. I guess that something else would be useful, but maybe we'll just deal with that later. Uh, okay, so this is things. Okay, questions. Really? Is this just making total sense? No. How did they have you do it? Wait, what's the long way? Oh, so you wrote it after. So I inadvertently answered the question, how you do this in a dry way. Great. Yeah, totally. And maybe I should have done that because like I, my rule is like write it three times and then refactor it down to one. Um, so I did not follow my own advice here. Also, we have like another 15 minutes to do this review. So we'll just do it in a slightly more efficient way. But does this make sense, what we're doing here? Like we, it's, it's not so different than having three copies of this code, one which looks at hotels, one which looks at restaurants, one which looks at um, activities. But, and in fact, the only thing that really changes is this, right? This is the only sort of thing that's weird where we're dynamically getting something out of the page based on the type. Otherwise, it's 
it's all the same because the options just have um, have an ID associated with them, which all of our attractions do, and they have a name, which all of our attractions do. Okay, uh, let's look at questions. So we have fetched attractions, we have populated these drop downs, we've not added anything to the map. Um, and we've not added anything to the itinerary. So let's see what progress we can make on that. We may not get through all of it. So what's supposed to happen? When I, um, when I click plus on one of these, uh, let's say it's on Dow's Wall Street, nothing happens, but instead what's supposed to happen is that we get a marker on the map um, and we get a hotel in here. So let's, which do you want to see first? What, the marker? Okay, let's do the marker. Um, so for that, first of all, what, what can I hook on to know when this thing is clicked? What is this thing? It's hotels add, restaurants add, activities add. Okay, so I can add a event listener, um, click which is going to receive an event and are we, wait, is this a jQuery workshop? Do you have jQuery around? No, okay, great, that's fine, that's fabulous. Um, so this is going to collect all click events on the entire page. If I just log the event, it's like, it's a little bit gratuitous. So there's a mouse event, there's a mouse event, there's a mouse event, everyone gets a mouse event. Um, but what I really want to do is only collect mouse events on these, on one of these buttons, which I can do by asking, uh, I think it's event, let's look at the event target. Um, great. And so the target should be a button whose ID looks like, or whose text. There's no like super principled way to um, distinguish these buttons from others, but how about an ID whose, um, or a button whose ID ends with add? That seems sensible. Uh, or maybe whose text content, no, let's, let's just do what I said. So um, we can actually ask, we can say if, um, I think I actually just need the target out of this, right? So let's get the target out of the event. And we can say if um, target dot, uh, tag name is button. Target that tag name isn't button, um, or target that text content isn't plus return. And so now we should only see clicks on these buttons and not clicks everywhere else in the page. We might not see those either. Let's just try, oh, this should be all caps. Yeah, there. Hotels add, restaurants add, and activities add. Um, I feel like a, maybe a more principled way of doing this selection would be to say that this is a, um, Data action is um, add. Uh, point of interest, you can just prefix arbitrary attributes with data and they go in the elements data set. You can put anything you want in there. So this is sort of guaranteed to not be, not conflict with some HTML attribute that might change the behavior of the button. Um, Target.dataset dot action add. Is 
Oops. No, I've done that. Okay. So now we're capturing these ad events. Um, and now the thing we would like is to be able to, first of all, get, figure out what is, like how this is associated with this. Like when I click this button, I wanna get the activity that's currently selected, and then I wanna put it on the map. So, data action is add. Let's just add another data attribute. Data um, select is Patel's choices. And maybe I'll even just say, make this something that I can um, query. Uh, maybe let's make it Nike. So data select Patel's choices. Data select is restaurant's choices. Um, data select is activities choices. Um, and may, I could also um, just sort of combine these two facts and say like data add from hotels choices, data add from restaurant choices, which is maybe a little bit more terse. And then all I have to do here is say data set that action that, or data set that add from So if I don't have that, then return. Otherwise, we're going to get it. Um, select is um, So this is just saying the same thing as before, pluck from the data set, pluck add from, and if it's not there, return. Um, now I don't have to dive in so deep. And so this should show me the associated select whenever I click one of these buttons. Activities, restaurants, hotels, yay. Uh, questions about that? Yeah. Oh, the ID? I altered the HTML. All I did was I, no, the ID is still there. I just added this. There are other ways I could have done this. I could have assumed that the button was around the select. I could have like gone up to its parent and looked for the select for a child that was a select. Um, I could have parsed the ID of the button and said like, oh, this starts with restaurants, so I'm going to look for restaurants choices. Um, there's a lot of options. I thought this was like kind of nicely explicit, right? Like we're not, we're not doing too much magical stuff. It's clear that this, this when you see data attributes like this, you should sort of think like, oh, this is going to get read in JavaScript. It's going to sort of change the behavior somehow. Um, and in this case, it tells us which select it's adding from. And it's kind of obvious, I think, that it's coming from there because the select is right in front of the button, right above the button. Um, so now, now that we have that select element, there's like a, there's a way to do this. It's like current. Oh, what? Oh. What is the selected selected options? Oh, there we go. So it looks like if I look at um, selected options of zero. And there will only ever be one selected option because we don't have multiple selection turned on. I will get the actual thing that is selected. Um, so I can ask for the option, which will be select 
dot selected options, and I'm going to array destructure that so that I get just the first selected option. Okay. So now when I click add on one of these, I get the select and I see, okay, I'm supposed to add this option to this uh, from this select to the map. Uh, and I have no idea what the latitude longitude is. So that's a little bit of a problem, isn't it? Um, we can fix that. This is an object, right? This option element is like an actual JavaScript object. It's sitting there in the DOM. We can just put properties on it. One thing we can put on it is, uh, say, let's call it attraction, is attraction. So we can take this object, this data object, and just put it on the DOM, something that there will be a snarky slide about later, but that's what we're going to do right now. And if I look at option dot uh, attraction, Now when I click add, it should have all the data, including, I think, the place. Yeah. So that should be enough to add something to the map. How do I add something to the map? Please help, I don't know. Sorry, so it's... Um, Oh, there's a marker JS. Oh, build marker. I see. Uh, so it takes a type, which okay does the image thing, and then coordinates, which is that just an array in the same form that we have it? Yeah. Thank God. Uh, okay, and this does not add it to the map. We have to call like map dot add marker presumably. OK, uh, add, well, let's just see. We'll, we'll probably want to break that out into its own function, but let's just do this for now. So option is select options, option is option, uh, and then build marker. Uh, oh, I guess we don't know the type of this. In all of this madness, we've lost the type of this attraction. So let's get it back. Um, create option should take the type as well. So we'll pass in the type and the attraction and then the type here. Um, and we'll actually just say that the attraction is um, all of that attraction data and the type, which is what object assign will do. It'll assign all of the properties of this to this, which means the type will be there, which means that now I should be able to say attraction.type and then the rest of the attraction. Oh, just the coordinates. Coordinates. Uh, so just fraction. Dot place. Dot chords. Chords. Location. Uh, let's just plug out type and location. And then we can add it to the map. Is it oh it's marker dot add to map or map dot add marker. Okay. No. Or an array of longitude latitude. What did you get in set? What did I give you?
at location. Undefined. Oh, place. I need right place dot location. That's pretty nuts. No. Uh, let's let's just do this. Type place, and then type, uh, and then we'll do place dot location. Oh, hey, that worked. So I added a hotel, and that's probably not here. Oh, it is. It's right there. And uh, farmhouse. Oh, great. So things are things are looking up. Okay, so questions about this. Yeah. Let's let's uh get this this destructuring went a little too far, I think. <laughs> um, I mean it's it's nice to see what you can do, but let's also like knock it out. So build marker is going to take option dot attraction dot type and option dot attraction dot place dot location. So and you could you could express you could do this destructuring beforehand and then it's just build marker of plate of type comma location. Um, or you can do this. This now that I'm looking at it, this is definitely clearer. But yeah, and we get to have access to the whole attraction data object because we just put it on the option right here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I seeded for Chicago as well, which maybe wasn't so great. Um, I can reseed with just New York. No, 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 I have both. Oh. I have both. So I have, I have like the W New York, which is like over there. Yeah. <laughs> Something went really wrong. We moved Chicago. No. No. And I, but I think if I go and add like that, then if I go. Yeah, there. <laughs> okay, so that's our adding things to the map. Uh, and let's just go, let's just go over one more time what's happening there. We are over time, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we have till 4.30? Oh, great. That's fabulous. Maybe we actually will finish out the itinerary then. Yeah, so we have, we're doing everything in our event listener. Um, probably when we um, actually have to add stuff to the itinerary, we will um, break this out into a couple of functions because we'll get a bit big. Um, but in this listener, we are, first of all, we're listening for clicks on the window which is arguably a little high up, like maybe maybe like the options panel would be a better place to listen for them. Um, so document get element by ID options panel dot add event listener should change nothing. Um, so we're, we're listening for any click anywhere in this panel. Um, so at this point, we are getting clicks 
even here or like when I click that, I get an event. And so the first thing we do is we look at the target from the event and we look at its the add from property within its data set. The data set is this feature of HTML5 where if I put attributes that look like data dash something, so in this case, data add from, and then any string, it will go, it'll become camel case first of all, so it turns add dash from into add from, and then go into the data set of the element so that I can use it from JavaScript. So I'm like, if that's not set, then just bail out. We didn't click on anything I care about. If it is set, then we clicked on one of these buttons, and I will go and fetch the, um, the element whose ID is referenced by this um, property. So in this case, hotels choices points here, and I go and fetch this select. Um, and then I ask which option, what is the first of all your selected options, um, which will be the only selected option. Uh, I build a marker for it, which we can do because we threw the data for the whole, mark, the whole thing on the DOM element itself, and then we add it to the map. And this works because we sort of wrote it in a more generalized way, this works for all of the buttons here. And then the last thing we can do is add, take this data and add it to the itinerary, which, what would that look like? Where do we have to add it? Any questions on this flow before we move on? Okay, let's look at the itinerary. So I've got a hotels list, a restaurants list, and an activities list. Um, it looks like the thing I want to do is take the name of this and put it into, like create a list item. Basically do the same thing um, that build marker does, but for a list item. And then append it to the appropriate uh, thing, the appropriate thing, uh, the appropriate list. So thing one, what is the appropriate list? Uh, probably we should do the same thing we did here and just have a data add to, here, wait, it's time, it's time for multiple lines. Add from data add to restaurant, oh, restaurants list. Uh, data add from activities choices, data add to activities list. I'm just moving the ID to the first position because probably it should be. Arguably it should even be up there. That looks nice, right? Uh, and then for the select, same deal, or for the hotel, same deal. Okay. So now we know what list to put something in when um, this is clicked. So I can first let's make sure, well, you can just do it here, right? So um, if add um, to, is that it? That's what I called it, add to, yeah. Um, so if we don't have anything to add to return at this point, um, otherwise, we will find the list, um, 
we already have the selected option. Maybe, maybe I will do one bit of destructuring because we're about to use it again and get the attraction. And here I can build a list item out of this attraction and then call list.append child uh, list item. And so I need to write this function build list item which is going to take an attraction that has a name. It's just the name, right? It's, it's literally like um, create a list item and then set its text content to be attraction name and then return the list item. Uh, and now when I, let's that a little bigger. Okay, so now when I go and pick something that's around here and add it, here's the hotel. Add a restaurant. I can add as many restaurants as I want. They don't even all have to be in New York. So that's adding them. Um, did we also have removing them in the itinerary? So there should probably be like a delete button here. Um, okay, questions on what we just did before I dive into that. That'll also, that's a little bit more complex to wire because I have to remove it uh, from the map as well. Uh, add items to itinerary. What's that? No? Okay. Uh, okay, so I want to have like a delete button on here. So let's, we'll set the, con we'll set the text content and then um, we'll create a delete button. Uh, which should it just be a button? Should it be a link? Let's make it a button. Um, and I've kind of forgotten. It's it is text content I can set on a button, right? So what is that emoji? It's like a red. Minus. Do I actually have to search through emoji now? Is that what it's come to? It's, uh, ooh, that one looks <laughs> that one looks hazardous. This is what I was thinking. No entry. Okay. Well, no entry sign. Uh, and then li dot append child del. I need to do something. Okay, that's that's pretty stylistically ugly, but maybe we'll fix it. Does did anyone off end know? Is there like an easy way I can fix that? I like say button. It's like options button the thing. I think I just want to set the style of this button to be like nothing. Um, so maybe I can be like Dell dot class list dot add. Um, Uh, free. Well, let's try. Let's try whatever we're doing for these. We'll say it's an options button. I 
think that'll be ugly too, but maybe it won't. Yeah, that's really ugly. That's hideous. We'll just say it's a delete button, and then in our style.css, we can Uh, I think I can even say, okay, so background, none, order, none. Uh, float right, is that, is that gonna be nice? Yeah, that looks good. Uh, outline none would be maybe nice so that that outline doesn't occur, but maybe we want that outline to be, occur, to be able to occur for accessibility. Um, and then I think I could actually say like bell button um, for content is that emoji that I just used. And then I don't have to set content in here. Yeah, cool. So you can you can do this little trick where you add um, you can basically put some content in the page with CSS by um, putting content in a before pseudo selector. This like creates another box before this box. CSS, it can do everything. You can't do this though. Can you? No, I don't think you can. I don't think you can stack them like that. But that would be amazing. You could do like a whole page with tons of content just in CSS. Never do that. That would be pointless. <clears throat> Okay, so this list item now, we have a few options as to how we can, um, we can make this work. Like we have a delete button, it doesn't do anything. Um, let's, here, let's see. So we want to, what do we want to do? We want to remove this list item um, and we want to remove the marker from the map. So the list item could know about its marker. That's not completely crazy. And then the, like when we click delete on, when we click the delete button, it could just remove both of them. So let's, let's do that. Um, we will say that this, takes an attraction and a marker, which we'll have because we just created the marker. So build a list item for this attraction and marker. Um, and then we'll set the marker to be marker. And we'll say that when this delete button is clicked, um, it will marker dot, how do I remove? Is that a thing? Yeah. And then li dot remove, it's li dot parent node dot remove child li. And so now, can add stuff, let's actually add something that's around here. And then if I click delete, it's gone, it's gone, it's all gone, great. Yeah. Yeah, there is, um, the event listener is slightly preferred. Dot on click, in fact, maybe I should switch to it here. Um, dot on click, for one thing, you can only have one of these. <laughs> um, 
No, no, no. Well, you're setting a property. So if I set on click to one thing here, and then I set on click to something somewhere else, it'll remove the existing listener. Um, that, in this case, is kind of fine. Who wants more click listeners for this particular thing? To be actually really safe, I should probably remove the listener. Um, like so. Otherwise, otherwise, I think I have a memory leak because this closure will hold a reference to some things that have been lost from the DOM. Um, but if I do this, then I think it'll be okay because this this listener will come detached from the uh, button, and the button will not be on the DOM, and everything will just get covered. Uh, that, this is also a problem with add event listener. Like, event listeners are one of the easiest ways to leak memory in JavaScript. But yeah, this is, this is not usually preferred. Um, it's, I think it's fine for a small case like this, but you would probably generally want to do um, like bell.add event listener click um, uh, move item and then function move item this would be the non like property way of doing it. I'm not sure I didn't break anything. Okay, so my styling's a bit jacked. But I didn't break anything. I think, I think if I want to use float, I need to have clear or something. Otherwise, when it gets too small, you see the effects of the saw. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's getting like closer and closer. What happens? Yeah. Huh. Do I, can I do like, Clear both and fix it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Okay, so questions on this? Got like a couple more minutes. Uh, okay, so one thing. So I, I don't totally love this code. Uh, one thing is that's weird is that we create the marker here and then we del delete it like in here inside build list item. I. I don't know. Like, I think what I might prefer, first of all, we don't need this line at all. LI doesn't need to hold a reference to the marker. Second of all, we, we could, the only reference to marker is here, right? Marker. So I, I think this code would be a little bit better if we didn't, if the build list item function didn't need to know about markers at all. And instead, if build list item took 
like a on delete, which we say, actually, this would be a good case for, um, yeah. So instead of marker.remove, we call on delete here. Uh, now we've lost all references to markers inside build, build this item, which sounds kind of nice. Um, and here we just have to say our on delete is marker.remove. So by passing in a closure, or by passing in a callback, we can um, extract knowledge about one part of an app from another and sort of disentangle them. So now only this function knows about markers and build list item just knows about the fact that there's like a delete button that does, I don't know, something. Uh, let's make sure that still works. Uh, and does, add on does. Move on does, still works. And then the last thing we might want to do is like make sure that you can't add the same thing 20 times. That I think was one of the things the workshop wanted from you. Uh, we don't, we are like at time, so let's just talk about how we would do that. How might you, how might you or how did you accomplish that? Nobody got that far. Uh, we, so I can add like the same restaurant <laughs> really as many times as I want, which I think is at some point the workshop is like, keep that from happening. You should not be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's really fine. You can also um, grab, so like, in, where do I do it? Uh, here, where we are, basically at this point, we have the attraction and we have the list, it's not add from or not add to return. Um, so we could grab the list a little bit earlier and then, um, at this point where we have the attraction, we can be like, okay, let's make sure it's not already there. So um, what would that be? It would be like list.child element, or list.query selector all, so find all options inside the list and turn that into an array and then map it to because our options have attractions on them, we can be like um, extract the um, attraction and uh, what do I want from that? I want to know, oh, I just want to find out. So if um, attraction.id is, oh, I should call this A a.id is attraction ID, which is the attraction we're about to add. Um, so if any of that, then return. So this will probably say if something's already there, don't add it again. Or it'll break because I broke something another option. Oh no, oh no, but it doesn't work either. I wonder why that is. Oh, a dot attract, oh, sorry, this should be attraction as a. Nope, still no.
Oh, oh, sorry. This is list items, and my list item needs to have the attraction data on it too, because I'm actually needing to query these. And this is a, a lie. Okay, great. So now I can only add one of something. If I remove it and then add it again, I can add it again, but only once. Uh, and I can still add other things, right? Nope, I cannot. <laughs> Damn it. I can only add one of anything. Okay, well, there's something clearly wrong with my code, but this is this is a general this is the general idea of how it is. Like, look at just look at what's in the list and compare them. All right, uh, any last thoughts? Next up, I think I think we're persisting. I think we'll be persisting. Um, our itineraries to a database and actually like fleshing out the rest of the app. Uh, who loved this kind of um, front end work? <laughs> sort of, kind of. So good news, um, whether you, if you liked it, this is like always still available to you. Um, I just worked on my personal site and it was all like creating stuff in the DOM, like I didn't use React, there wasn't really any point, it's like a very small site. And you can still, um, you can always go in, and it's always useful to be able to manipulate uh, these um, sort of lower level structures directly. Also, when we learn React, uh, you will be freed from a lot of this and given sort of a structure to work inside that makes it a bit easier to manage mapping data to the page. So we're doing this because like, you will still encounter code like this and it's useful to know what's going on, but higher level frameworks make it easier. All right, um, let's take, yeah. Um, so there's this, yeah, so I have a recording of this um, that I just made and we'll send out. There's also another recording of um, a different live review that I can send out, um, but there's no review video like someone sitting down and recording a review video. I will try and find, uh, yes, uh, we can find that. Somewhere, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, um, next we have Karen with talking about something. But we'll take five minutes uh, and prepare. <laughs>